Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. So, I thought I was recording, but I accidentally forgot to press the button. But the good thing is I noticed before I did too much. So let me just catch you up to date. The focus for this episode is going to be trying to make the runic altar. So that I can get into a bunch of Batania stuff. That's going to really open up a lot of things for me. And the one thing that we don't have at the moment to make the runic altar is the reinforced slates, which come from blood magic. But to get into blood magic... I need to get into Ars Magica 2. So that's what I'm doing. I'm working towards this, and I'm starting with Ars Magica 2. So I've made... The first thing I've made is the Arcane Compendium. That's the guidebook for Ars Magica 2. Um, and I made that by... You know these strange puddles of liquid that you see around that look a little bit different from water? These? These are... I'm not sure what the liquid's actually called, but these are from Ars Magica. And that is how you get the Arcane Compendium. You put an item frame right next to the puddle, like right there is where I put it. And then you put a book in the item frame, and then it just like... A bunch of cool effects happen, and it turns into the Arcane Compendium. So I don't know much about Ar Ars Magica 2, except that you can use it to make spells and stuff. It's like a spell, it's got a spell crafting system. So I'm just using the guidebook pretty much. I open up the guidebook, and the first thing I saw was your first spell, and said you have to make an Oculus. And then I just stop reading at that point. So that's what I've been trying to do, is make an Oculus. This thing. Which requires... A mana lens. So I made some more mana steel ingots. It requires verdant sprigs, which I found them in the past, but I guess I threw them away because I didn't know that they were important. It turns out that they are a 1 in 30 drop chance when breaking a block. Um, that's a crop. So I just went over here. And I made a pretty big field of wheat and just broke it all. Managed to get two sprigs. So that solved that problem. And then the next problem was making the vibrant quartz glass. This thing has got a pretty deep crafting tree. So for that you need quartz glass. And for quartz glass you need structural glass. And for structural glass you need hardened lumium glass. Which requires obsidian powder and lumium blend inside of an induction smelter. Which I don't have, or didn't have rather. But it's fairly simple crafting ingredients. I made the smelter, which allowed me to make that glass, and now I've gotten up to the point where I can make the vibrant quartz. And the last thing I need is the blue topaz block, which is just a bunch of blue topaz, which I've had forever, put into a compressor. And that's where we're at right now. So, welcome back. Alright, let's make this oculus and see what we can do with it. I love this new crafting system. Here we go! Oh yeah, um... I also had to make these pure nether quartz crystals, which come from putting nether quartz seeds inside of the mana pool. And nether quartz seeds are just nether quartz dust with sand. Wasn't too bad. Right, so I've got an oculus, now we put this down, and then we win. Okay, whoa, what the hell? Ah. Um, let's read the book. Your first spell. So you first need to create an oculus and unlock at least one spell shape and one component. You start with three blue skill points to make this possible. Then craft a writable book and head over to your inscription table. Okay, well before I unlock anything, I'm going to need an inscription table, obviously. Let's hope that's not too hard to make. I have literally none of that. <laughs> okay, treated wood slabs. That I can make. That requires treated wood planks. Wait. has to be... You have to, like, change it. It has to be chiseled? It has to be this specific... No, that's nonsense. I'm just gonna bypass that entirely. Um, Because we should have... Yeah, we have a bunch of treated wood. If I put it like this... Yeah, there you go. There's slabs. I don't know why I wasn't doing that before. Okay.
Well, at least we have that. Phantom ink. Spell parchment. Ventium torch. This must be easy. Indeed. Spell parchment. Pattern and sugar cane. Ah. We got those. Let me go grab those. It looks like we're also going to need a mana pearl. Which I'm assuming is still the vanilla recipe of a ender pearl inside of a mana pool. Let's put down some more coal to generate more mana, because we keep needing quite a bit of mana. Yeah. There we go. I think we're going to have everything but the witchwood logs. So, we should be able to make the spell parchment now. Indeed. Phantom ink should now be able to make it now that I've got the mana pearl. Yeah, everything but the witchwood. I thought we had witchwood, but maybe I used it. I mean, I guess so. Ah, there's one. And I think there's another. Thankfully, they're easy to spot because they are so distinctive. Yeah, so apparently, if you want these to grow from saplings, apparently they need to be planted next to, uh, I think it's called liquid ethereum. That's the stuff I place the item frame next to, apparently. So you gotta place them next to a pool of that, and when they also, when they grow, they have a chance of spawning these alms next to them, around them. As you can see, they're localized right around the tree, so I think those are used in some spells too, so I should probably grab them. Let's hope I get a sapling. Oh, I think I saw one. I'm gonna take these trees down too. Just because, yeah, now that it'll all disappear. And grab the alms. Yeah, it looks like we only got one sapling from that. Pretty brutal. Hopefully that's just bad luck and that's not what you generally get. Anyway, just to have one closer to home, let's plant it right here. Yeah, cool. Probably won't make any alms though, because I don't think alms can spawn on sand around it. But that's fine, I've already got some. Okay, we should be able to make the inscription table now. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> burn time 300. I can burn this thing if I want. Cool. Alright. Got some neat looking GUIs. So I think it's that we're going to need writable books as well. Let's take a look. Where's Magic of Books? Evil Book? Arcane Spell Book? Uh... Oh, maybe if I writable book, they just meant book and quill? Oh yeah, it actually says Minecraft colon writable book. Okay. Let's make some of these. Oh, I don't have any paper. That's fine. I, what? It's not putting the recipe in correctly. Paper is... No, what? <laughs> it doesn't know how to do it. All right, that's wh huh? I, it's probably the inventory panel. Inventory panels do tend to be a bit glitchy. Let's make a bunch of books. I'm guessing... Hmm, I was going to make a bunch of them, but they actually don't stack. So, maybe not. So, it said we need one spell unlocked and one component, right? Unlock one spell shape and one component, and you have enough points to do it. We got three blue points. So... What the hell is a component? And what's a spell shape? <laughs> oh Christ, I just unlocked it, just by clicking it once. I thought there'd be a confirm or something. Uh-oh. 
uh, Let's Hope Projectile is a spell. Wait. Physical damage, bounce, gravity. These must be components, actually. Projectile is a component. That's a type. That's not a spell. Self. Touch. What is this? I can't do anything with that. I have no idea what to do. Okay, let's see if we can kind of figure this out by throwing in a writable book. Duh, I'm not going to give it a name yet. Yeah, so projectile is a thing. Ah, oh, Christ, this says something behind this, but eh, I don't know how to get rid of this. Oh, I thought one tab would be just for one type of thing, like one tab would be for shapes, one tab would be for components, but no. So this is a shape, apparently, projectile, and then these are components. So I guess it's going to be a projectile, and then it can do these things on whatever it hits. Make it bounce, do physical damage, or something about gravity. Uh, let's do bounce. Okay, so now we've got two things. We have a projectile. Drag bounce in there. Does it need more? Ah, there we go. I got it to disappear. For some reason, the shortcut I set before didn't work. At least one component is needed. What's a component? It's a projectile and it's gonna bounce. What more do I need? I don't see why I would need to have two effects, but let's try gravity. Hope I didn't mess that up, because I don't have any more blue points. At least one component. Wait, you're telling me that none of these are components? Or... what? Wow, so apparently it is designed in such a way that you can actually just select the wrong things and be completely screwed. Not, not completely screwed, but like 99% screwed. For some reason, the book seems to neglect to tell you... Yes, it doesn't seem to tell you what a component is. Or a shape is, specifically. Apparently a shape is a square, this. And a component is an octagon, or... Is octagon the right word? I'm not sure. Whatever the shape is. So I got these. I don't know what types these are, but they're not what I need. Apparently I need physical damage. So, that's ridiculous? My god, this is a terrible book. It's a guide for creating your first spell, and yet it doesn't actually give you the information you really need to make your first spell. So, that's cool. Anyway. Apparently there's two ways to get around it. You can apparently find infinity orbs, which give you experience. More experience points to get new skills. In dungeons and stuff like that, but I don't think I found any in all of my explorings. Uh, there's also apparently a slash respec command. But that doesn't seem to work. So I just cheated in a bunch of blue infinity orbs. I'm, I'm not gonna... No. That's ridiculous. I'm not gonna go out of my way to fix a problem that shouldn't even exist in the first place. Okay, single blue skill point. I think that's all I need, right? Okay, I'm just gonna delete these now. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Just make your skill tree so that your first three points have to be on a thing that's gonna actually work. My god. Okay, so at the minimum we need a shape... and something like this, right? Hmm. Does it have to go in the next one? What? Huh? What are these? Huh. Maybe I should read the book more. Well, we got one. Um. Okay, but we need to finish the spell, I believe. I believe it says... Uh, once your combination is completed, go to your crafting altar and place your book containing the spell recipe on the lectern. Throw a blank rune. So I need a crafting altar and a blank rune. I know there's runes in blood magic, but that must be one from Ars Magica, right? Yeah, okay, whoa. Holy crap. That takes some... Strange stuff. I mean, this stuff is easy. I've got tons of that. Dawnstone, 
Uh, I think I've got a decent amount of that. What is this? Other world leaf. Iron inlay. Runestone symbol. Uh oh. I don't know how to get that. Iron inlay. Arcane ash. How do we get arcane ash? Arcane compound. How do we get arcane compound? Oh, that's easy. Alright, well, I'm gonna make a bunch of this. Okay, now we can make the inlays. Fantastic, but what about the runestone symbol? Glass shard and runestone. What about the runestone? Living rock and diamond shards. A shard die from Woot? You haven't done anything with Woot. Uh, Woot's a mod that allows you... I don't know if I explained it before. Woot's a mod that allows you to basically um, sort of make a mob farm without actually spawning the mobs themselves. I think it's kind of oriented towards trying to improve server performance and things like that. It kind of skips the whole mob spawning thing and just gives you their drops, basically. But of course it has its own systems to make it so that it, it's actually at least somewhat difficult to be able to spawn the mobs. So I'm sure there's like tiers of upgrading and stuff. I don't know. I've never actually messed with it before. Um, there's got to be an easier way. Diamond Nugget. So Nugget, Shard, two types of Nuggets, or Fragment. Oh, Christ. Which way is the easiest way? How do you get a Diamond Nugget? There's so many different forms of this. Oh, you can just turn diamond into a bunch of nuggets. Okay, I didn't think that'd be that easy. Okay, now we can make a bunch of rune stones. Got 32. But now to make the rune stone symbols, I need glass shards. Well, apparently you just get it from breaking glass. I mean, I knew you could do that, but I was figuring there'd be a better way. Like grind it up or something, but nope. All right, so now I can make a bunch of runestone symbols. All right, now we got everything but the other world leaf. Well, that's uses for it. That's not the recipe for it. Let me Google it. I've underestimated how much I need to do to accomplish what I want. So I was hoping I could just pass by roots, but I can't. We actually have to get at least a decent amount into the Roots mod to be able to get into Ars Magica, to be able to get into Blood Magic, to be able to get into Batania. I'm determined to do it, though, because, like, I've been putting it off for a long time. I want to do Batania Mana Generation stuff, but I, just, I gotta do a bunch of other magic stuff first. And I think I've been so hesitant because I have, like, no experience with Ars Magica or Roots or Blood Magic, so I didn't really want to do it, but you know what? That's kind of like half the point of an expert pack. It's kind of forcing you to play with a lot of mods that you don't normally have to play with because they're so interdependent. So I'm going to do it. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to dive like completely super deep into each mod. I am going to try to just sort of get as far into it as I need to. But my plan is to come back to them later and, you know, see what more of the more end game stuff is in Roots and Ars Magica and things like that. But for now, let's try to get into them a little bit. So, there's a thing called a runic tablet. I just made it. Yeah. So it's basically the the uh, the manual. It's got all sorts of stuff, but I was just looking at a video. And yeah, so first thing I need to make is the casting altar. If I want to. Um, so basically, to get verdant... Uh, was it verdant? Not verdant sprig. The leaf thing. Otherworld leaf. To get the otherworld leaf, I need to get... Sp I need to summon sprites. And to summon sprites, I need to do a whole ritual with the casting table, so we need to make a casting table. Which, from looking at it, looks... interesting. Okay, verdant sprigs. I don't have them, but I can get them. That's easy enough. I got the runestones. Gold inlays. Purified ventium dust. Whoa. Colorful. Flux, Ventium, Arcane Ash. I apparently have all that stuff. A little bit. Okay. Alright. 
Well, that's good at least. So now I need Infernal Bulb and Mana Tablet. Oh, that's super easy to make. Just a Mana Pearl or a Mana Diamond. And then a bunch of Living Rock, which I already have. I can go make that super quick. But what about the other thing? Yeah, Infernal Bulb. Uh, once again, of course, no recipe. Let's see if we can use the Runic Tablet to find out about that. Does it have its own separate section, or is it like a subsection? Uh, I don't see it. Maybe Rare Materials? Ah. We'll drop out a 1 at 20 chance from Grown Nether Wart. Hmm. Oh, looks like they have a bunch of other uses, too. Um, they can be used as fairly effective furnace fuel or given to skeletons to make them withered. Hmm. It seems like a really cool mod. Like, I really want to get into it. But again, I'm probably going to pass it by right now. Like, I'm, I don't think I'm going to make a separate beautiful section for Ars Magica or Roots or anything like that just yet. I think I'll do that when I get into them more. So, fully grown nether wart. Well, I have nether wart. I can plant it. Actually, can I plant it? It needs to be planted on soul sand. Do I have soul sand? Tiny bit. I don't think you can bone meal nether wart, though, can you? Let's find out. No, you can't. Okay, let me look up if there's a way to speed up their growth. Okay, I, I don't think I can actually speed up their growth. So, I mean, there are various ways to do it. Pretty much anything that speeds up growth normally would work, but the problem is none of those really work. I mean, obviously bone meal doesn't. Worms wouldn't work because they can't... I mean, I'm assuming they can't be put on soul sand. That wouldn't make any sense. Aside from that, it's just all the general growth items like, hey, the Batania growth thing. Well, I can't get into Batania yet. Apparently there's a growth speed up thing in Blood Magic. Well, <laughs> I can't get into that yet. There's a growth thing in Ars Magica 2. Well, I'm doing this to get into Ars Magica 2. So in other words, I don't think there's anything I can do. So I'm just going to plant as much as I can, let it grow, and uh, I guess head to the nether and see if I can find more nether wart. Okay, I've collected a bunch more nether wart. Got a pretty good amount planted. They're all growing. At the moment that we only have two that are fully grown, and there's a 1 in 20 chance of it dropping what I want. So we have a 1 in 10 chance that I'll get what I want from these two. Damn. Oh wow, just from those two fully grown ones, I got six. Cool, I can pretty rapidly expand this farm then. Don't mind the demonic laughter. Well, I'll be taking this time to make some of the other things we're going to need, and some things that we might need. I've just been looking at the root stuff, and there's something called a bark knife that allows you to get a bark from trees. So that might be needed. There's a mortar and pestle. Don't know if I'll need those. We also do definitely need four incense braziers. Now, uh, if we look at this for the Lesser Spirit, Lesser Spirits, uh, the ritual requires four different flowers as incenses. And I looked at the first, like, 30 seconds of a video of somebody summoning it, and they showed a bunch of incense braziers around the summoning table or whatever it is. And I feel like this might be, like, is this showing me what I need to do to summon, like, the things I need around the crafting table to summon it? If so, I might need whatever these are, but what are they? Because these are the incense things, the four incense things. This is the crafting table. What are these? Okay, I think those other things we saw on that layout, aside from the incense, is the attuned standing stones, I think. So I went ahead and made eight of them. Looks like many more are fully grown. Let's see if we get lucky. Aha! I think we just got it. Yeah, Infernal Bulb. Okay, so what are we looking at now for the casting altar? Ah, I've got everything but the mana tablet. Oh, right, and I've got everything for the mana tablet. Okay, we can make it. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, I think this is another issue with the inventory panel. I think it doesn't like things that have metadata or NBT data. I'm not sure which one it is. Probably NBT. 
So the mana tablet, um, it can hold mana, obviously. So it's got an extra, you see it's got like a, basically a durability bar. I think that the, the crafting table doesn't like that. So I think I have to manually add everything. This should do it. Yeah, there we go. Casting altar. Okay, between the casting altar, the incense, brazier, and the eight attuned standing stones, we should have everything we need. And in fact, I th might as well just get the stuff for the ritual itself, too. I think it was pretty simple. If we take a look. So it needs ender pearl, redstone, and glowstone. Okay, let's try to construct the environment. So I don't think the exact layout that it shows for the ritual is exactly what we need to do. I think we need, obviously we need the amounts they show, but I don't think we need to configure it exactly how they show. Yeah, I think that'll work. Am I missing something, or do these actually have to be in the exact, like, these stones and everything, do they need to be in the exact order? Aha, uh -huh. sneak right-click the altar with an empty hand to begin the ritual. Okay. No valid ritual found. Crap. Okay, so I believe the problem is that I misunderstood this. I thought that these were maybe the incense things, but I don't think they are. I think these are the lower tier. These eight are the lower tier, um, whatever these are called. And then these are the higher tier ones that I had made. So I think it's eight mundane standing stones around it, and then four attuned standing stones. Now I put them around in just an ugly, hideous way, because I want to see if the order of them, like the placement, actually does matter or not. So let's find out right now. No valid ritual. Okay, so the order might matter. Let me get them into place. Okay, I've laid it out exactly how it shows. Except for the incenses, which it doesn't show. I don't think those matter. Where, where they're placed, as long as they're nearby. Let's try this. If this doesn't work, then I have absolutely no idea. They're all going. Aha! Okay, should summon a spirit. And I'm going to want to kill it. Need hay. I feel bad killing it, but I kind of need to. They do. They do drop. Um, they will passively drop the thing I want. Apparently, the other. No, it's not the other world leaf. Is it? Yeah, yeah, it is the other world leaf. Apparently, they will passively drop it over time, but it sounds like that happens really slowly. Oh, where'd it go? Oh. And, like, I don't know if it's going to stay in the area, or if it's just going to wander around. It seems to be staying around here. Maybe I could just summon a bunch more real quick, before the incense runs out. They're so beautiful. The little chimey noises they make as they fly around. Yeah, I've got so many spirits. So it does say that they will occasionally drop them as they fly around if you let them live long enough, but so far they haven't dropped a single one. I really don't want to kill them though, so I think I'm just going to wait a bit longer. I'm assuming that perhaps the lesser spirits are less likely to drop them than the bigger spirits. Speaking of, what would the rituals be like for the bigger spirits? Common and greater. So there's two more tiers. Uh, you wonder if you can summon something a bit more impressive. Using a lesser spirit, you can push a ritual even closer to the otherworldly plane. This ritual requires six incenses, each one a different overworld flower, as well as a lesser spirit near the altar. Hmm. Well, I've certainly got the lesser spirits. Oh, it does. It requires a leaf to be able to do it, though. So I can't get to the next tier without a leaf. Still nothing. Well, I'm going to wait. Oh, I just look at my phone and then I just look back at the game and it looks like one dropped one. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, there's another one. 
Okay, cool. The fact that two came at the same time makes me think that it is actually on a timer. I was thinking it was just random. You know, some might drop at any point, some might drop later, sooner. But maybe it is just like after, you know, being alive every eight minutes or something they drop one. But if so, then we should see a bunch more quite soon, because I started summoning them in mass. Well, anyway, I'll check back later. They're so cool. Love all my spirit friends. I kind of barely remember why I was even doing that. That was to make the crafting... Crafting altar? Okay, can somebody remind me? What the hell I was making this for? I mean, I'm sure I'll have figured it out by the time you watch this episode, but why did I need the other world leaf? I do not remember. The only Ars Magica thing it seems to be used for is the green infinity orb, which I certainly don't need to make. What the, he what the heck was I making it? Why did I do all that? <laughs> there must be a reason. So I need to make the crafting altar to take the book to it. And, uh, I mean, it does require... Everstone, which does require runestone from roots, but runestone doesn't require the leaf or anything. Anyway, um, I guess we can just make this. Okay. Speaking of, where's my spell? Oh, thank God. There was a point to it. I just totally forgot it. So I did need the crafting altar. I could have made that the whole time, but... After placing the unfinished spell in the crafting altar, you need to throw a blank rune onto it, and that requires the glowing runestone symbol, which requires the other world leaf. Okay. I didn't waste my time. I have no iron inlay. Because hm. he used it all up. Oh good, I've got a, enough Dawnstone. I haven't used that in so long. I'll make like 18. I think I have to use one for each spell, so I'm assuming I'm going to use it quite a bit. Okay. And by the way, I have no idea where my spell went. I just made another one. One called Bouncy Damage. It's a projectile, it does damage, and I also added Bounce to it? I think? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Once your combination is completed, go to your crafting altar and place your book containing the spell recipe on the lectern. I mean, this doesn't look like a lectern, but this is a crafting altar. Maybe it's like a multi-block structure. Oh my god, this book is terrible. This Ars Magica book, like, it's there's so much info in it, but it's so it doesn't make any sense, and it's not laid out in a sensical <laughs> manner. Yeah, so I'm in blocks, and then I found crafting altar. It says, harnessing the forces of creation, the blah, blah, blah. Um, the crafting altar is a component of a multi-block structure. I'm like, okay, sure. So what's the multi-block? It doesn't say. There's no next page. This is it. Like, wh what's the multi-block? Dear God. Where does it tell me how to make this thing? Structure? Okay. Why wasn't that just in blocks? I, uh, what does it look like? Oh, Christ. Well, these don't look hard, they're just a lot of different types of things. Oh, this thing! I saw this in a video. So this is familiar. I don't know why there's different numbers on these. Four, one, one, one. I'm pretty sure you can make it out of any of these, right? This is confusing. Okay, well, let me try to get this thing together. Okay, I think I've successfully made the multi-block structure. Much dark oak, some blocks of redstone, we got some magic walls on the side. And then at the center top, we have the crafting altar, which after I made it, it kind of converted into the block type of what's around it. Because before it was all white. Now it's kind of... Well, maybe we can actually see it if we just get rid of this. Boop. Yeah, you see it changes. So I'm not sure what this lever's about. Maybe we just turn it on to start the ritual, but, uh, yeah, let's try this. So we need to put this here, and then it says throw a blank rune. I'm just, oh. Oh. Uh, I think it's working. 
But the lever's off. Does it not even need to be on? Maybe it just does nothing. Maybe it's just for looks. Ah, okay, so this thing above the book, I thought that was just like a, hey, I'm crafting, but no, that's saying it wants that item, which I believe is Vintium Dust. So I think we need to supply it with whatever it prompts you with. And I'm assuming you just throw this in. Yeah. Okay, now it wants an arrow. Dang, there's going to be a lot of back and forth. Hopefully it doesn't want too many things. Snowball. Uh. Hmm. That is a red rune? Yes. Oh, it's just red dye and a blank rune. That's super easy. Wow, it really needs a lot of things, huh? Iron sword. What the hell is that? Oh, I think it's this. Earth Essence? What? I hate this book even more now. It's like your first spell. Oh yeah, just do these things, make these things, throw it into the crafting altar, and you're done. I thought this was like something you could do right at the very beginning, but if I gotta make this refiner... Is that a multi-block structure too? I mean, what is this? Psy metal? I... I mean, okay, I can make that. I can make that. Psy dust. Oh. Well, that's gonna have to wait for the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're gonna get further into Ars Magica and hopefully actually make our first spell. <laughs>